I think it's funny when somebody says something that they're guilty of, right? So you got Rand Paul, Saudi foreign minister, has a lot of gall to lecture the U.S. So if we were to watch this video, we would see him talking about how somebody else has the gall to lecture him on something. But why would anybody listen to him? right? He's just another one of these politicians who's installed themselves or the establishment has installed him for whatever obtuse reasons they've done it for. He's, he's a racist. He's openly racist. He believes that uh, people should be able to decide whether they want to uh, well, he's dis he's he believes that people should be able to tell black people or whoever that they can't eat in their restaurants. Okay, so he's never been willing to say no. I think we should regulate uh, restaurant owners and store owners and make them accept, uh, treat people equally based on religion, sex, uh, political beliefs, whatever. Now, the fact is, is that stores are quasi-public. Matter of fact, they should be technically completely public, but because we have this system of property, uh, store owners want to claim complete control. So they're with Rand Paul on this. So it's obviously most store owners are right wing. Okay, so they're all going to say this. And the more racist ones and the more the bigger assholes they are, really is what it comes down to. Uh, the more they're going to say that they want to be able to run their store, obviously their first priority is to make money, right? Because that's where their security comes from. But then, once they're making money, they want to be able to institute their own political beliefs, their own religious beliefs. So, Let's say that part of their doing business is that people come in and they get to know each other and they talk and they become friends and they hang out around the store. Now, like it or not, these stores should be regulated. So everybody should be treated equally. So a store owner shouldn't be able to say, well, you know, I'm going to let all the white people come in and hang out and bring in food and bring in coffee. But some of the other people, whether they're black or Hispanic or Asian or something, I'm going to tell them they need to move on. You know, once you've purchased your stuff, you need to get out of here. Or in a restaurant, I'm not going to serve, you know, certain black people. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you can't have it both ways, right? You either allow people to come in and speak freely, but you can't say, I'll just allow certain people to come in and speak freely. Or I'll allow certain people to come in and not speak at all. If they want to gab, then they need to take it outside. You know, whatever. I, I think it's, I think if you looked at everything technically, uh, you'd find that it's not really that complicated. I mean, whenever you get an individual with a certain political persuasion imposing that, within their store, whether it means kicking out 
black people because you're a racist or kicking out Republicans because you're a progressive. Obviously, we need regulation, you know, so that you can't do that. You can kick them all out and say this isn't a place, you know, I only allow people to come in and purchase things. Or you can allow them all to come in. I mean, obviously within reason. Obviously, you're not going to allow them to be violent or uh, maybe you don't even allow belligerence. But if you do that, you should be regulated to where you don't allow anybody to be belligerent. I mean, what kind of place would it be if you allowed people to sit and talk to each other, but you only allowed right-wing Republicans to get up in somebody's face and yell in their face, right? But a, a Democrat or a progressive gets up and yells in somebody's face, and you're, you're not allowed to come in my store anymore. You know what I mean? I, I mean, can you see it? It's, I don't think it's that complicated. I really don't. But for this guy, and he, his face makes me d disgusted because he's a disgusting piece of shit. I don't care how much he pretends not to be. So he will talk about, you know, our illegal wars and stuff so, so that he can be right about something. Why does he do that? Simple. Because that's the only thing that makes it onto TV. So he's able to promote his good side and not promote his bad side. That's all it is. Ugh. He's disgusting. Please get him off my screen. And then I got to look at this, right? I mean, the, the fuck faces. And it's always the same people. Look, it's CBS. CNN. They're the ones always uh, doing these stories. I don't care. There's nothing you can tell me that I don't already know about these assholes. Oh, and by the way, RT America has Rick Sanchez. I doubt that's even his real name. Because they're just p uh, feeding off of the popularity from Rick and Morty. <laughs> that's, that's the end thing for the establishment, right? They let other people with far more talent, far more creativity, uh, create the cool stuff. And then when it catches on, they steal the name. They steal the yeah, the idea, basically. I, well, the reason I'm saying that is because I kept wondering, who's Rick Sanchez? Is he a congressman that I knew the name? Or, or And then I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Rick Sanchez, that's Rick from Rick and Morty. Uh, so as a result... I will never watch Rick Sanchez on RT. <laughs> I mean, there's so many people that RT could have picked. They could have picked the ra Rational National. They could have picked Mike Figueredo. They could have picked uh, Kyle Kalinske, you know, to have their own show. But no, they pick Rick Sanchez. And usually RT's pretty good. I mean, they picked Jesse Ventura recently. You know, they should pick a guy like uh, Phil Donahue. That guy's been out of work for ages, and everybody loved him. Yeah, I have problems with everybody. That's because everybody has problems. 